Welcome to virtual space. Welcome to Art and Technology. Today we're going to be thinking about VR and its future. Virtual reality refers to a computer-generated simulation in which a person can interact within an artificial three-dimensional environment. We're joined by media pioneer Scott Fisher and artist Rachel Rawson. Scott, I'm really interested in beginning with you and just hearing a little bit about how you got involved with virtual reality technology. I grew up in the 50s, totally obsessed with 3D comics, started doing stereoscopic imagery, and we started mocking up, then putting screens actually on your eyes. If we're tracking kind of where you're looking and updating the image fast enough, all of a sudden you're completely surrounded by this virtual space. You know, we're slowly building a vocabulary of, you know, this exactly. experience, but, you know, for the most part, people just feel like they're watching TV, which is a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I can imagine that being very frustrating, having created it. it. It's an extra challenge to have to make the work and then like design your audience. I mean, it is yeah. something that's trained. Um, I gotta say, kids, are, gaming is, kids are great. Oh, kids, no problem. Yeah, always, there's never a problem. The first virtual spaces that I was opening were games. And the first experiment was, you know how there's this like sort of vocabulary for death in rebirth in video games. So in virtual reality, you would be exploring with these worlds that I had procedurally generated that were on top of each other and they would just sort of fall on the sequence without any sort of cause. So you'd have like sort of this feeling of like death and rebirth very quickly. And then that led to the virtual reality piece I came and went as a ghost hand. You know, we've had a couple decades of people growing up with games, exploring these virtual spaces. Yeah, it's through a screen, but it's projecting yourself in there. You've got your avatar. That whole culture, I think, is absolutely critical to what we're able to do now. Yeah, I think that's it's so interesting. I mean, it's exactly what Scott's saying. It's, there's all these things that I take for granted, right? It's like so much of my interest and in so much of the way that I've been able to access this medium or like even way of expression is through gaming. Yeah, as Rachel was saying, if it weren't for games and game culture, I think the work we did 35, 40 years ago just would never have taken off. But then, you know, I, at one point, the work we were doing at NASA was like featured in a book on dead technology, which I'm like, oh, ouch. The fact that like gaming is the only frame that we feel we can bring to it just shows how poorly we've actually thought about these issues. <laughs> Me personally, not, not you, obviously. There's not even really a word for what that is. I get we should call it like gaming because that's what we have, but um, it's so much broader, right? It's like, especially when you start applying art or even development to it. And so the idea that anyone would call it dead technology is just so, so silly because it does feel like it's here to stay. Thanks for joining for part one with Scott and Rachel. Next time, we'll be talking about the future of VR and how they'll contribute to it. Hyundai Motor. Connecting art and technology.